Hey everyone, Dr. Baron Grutter here. Uh, so in this video, I want to show just a quick way to use uh, the multiple platform STL that I uploaded recently and uh, made another video about. So I want to talk about some other ways to use it to sort of expand its function. So first of all, let's go ahead and bring in what I'm talking about to help explain. So this is an STL that's very simple. It's the same print platform that I have created um, and uploaded to Thingiverse. Uh, also make sure the, the uh, download link is in the description of this video as well. So if I uh, bring this in, I can click on it. This uh, different softwares will do, both. most of the different printing softwares out there should do exactly what I'm doing. This is just an example using the Rayware software, which is used by, uh, used for the Sprint Ray printers, the Moonray. Moonray S and D in particular, and uh, I use the S. This is what it's sized for. So um, just a quick heads up, the D is a smaller print bed, so you can see that. Okay, so um, right now if I click on the, the STL, the object, and then I click this little button, I can click to a face to flatten it out. Okay, so now all I have to do is move this to the center of the print platform. So I created this for nine models. That may seem like an arbitrary number. I just found that nine is pretty predictably f uh, it pretty pretty predictably fits on here. I can get nine to ten or eight to ten pretty often. Um, so sometimes more, sometimes less. It just depends on the size of the model. So in this video, I kind of want to show you some of the ways uh, to you know compensate for different size models. So first, let's go ahead and bring in a sample model. I'm going to bring in this lower model. Now, a quick, quick way to orient this is if I click on here, go to this orientation menu. I can use the little uh, spinner here to do it, but I also find that just clicking here twice gets it you know, close, and now I'm just trying to settle it down. Um, and then lastly, if I drag this over top here, right over top of one of the platforms, click on this one, these little um, buttons correlate to the X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z. Click on it once, and it turned it 90 degrees. Now I can try to eyeball from the top and center it over top. If you watch, it turns red. That means the base, this aspect, will not print. That may not matter, but it is off the print platform. So if I squeeze it forward, and if I look closely, now if you're not familiar with using the software, if you press the shift, uh, the space bar, you can move the whole print platform around. Uh, and I'm using, <coughs> I'm holding the space bar, left clicking, and now I can drag it. And I'm going to zoom in. And I, if you notice, this is not quite 90 degrees, and that's just the way it was exported. So I'm going to turn it just a little bit. It does not have to be perfect. Do not worry about making it perfect. Um, but just for the sake of this video demonstration, I want to make it pretty ideal. So you can see it's pretty darn close. And let's zoom back out. And you can see how it fits. And honestly, this would probably print just fine. Um, there's a little bit of a tilt to it, and this is a little shallow of a turn, so I might go ahead and plan on tipping this model back a little bit, so there's a little bit of an angle to it. Um, and that would clip off this part. Again, that won't matter because the aligner would be cut far short of that, even though that little part won't print. But that's an option. Now, if you didn't, if you needed to preserve it, so let's say we tipped it back too far and we got too close to the gingiva where we were a little bit nervous, that's still probably okay, but if it wasn't, well, say we moved it forward, all we have to do is move the whole print platform forward as well. Okay, So what does that mean? Well, it means that this little guy gets clipped off. So does that matter? Um, we're going to have a little base here and you're going to waste about, um, I don't know, maybe two-thirds of a, a, a two-thirds of an, a milliliter of resin, so you're essentially going to be wasting, um, we'll say, I don't know, a 10 cents, so not a big deal, uh, but you know, if you that's one way to account for it. So I do think that this angle is a bit steep because the contact area right down here is pretty minimal, so I, would, I wouldn't recommend dialing it back that far. I'm just showing you an example. I think that that's probably enough contact area, so we can slide this back and that should be a good solid print. I would be confident in that, except, well, it's falling off here a little bit. So anyway, you can see the kind of the purpose. You're just eyeballing it, and it looks pretty easy there. Now, uh, so that gives you the example there. Now, what, if, what happens if you need more surface area? You want to, um, let's go ahead and uh, upright this back, and you don't want to tilt it at all, but you want more support for um, this overhang right here. 
you need you need more support and you need it so you need a bigger base well I'm going to show you later in the video how to actually modify the files the the platform itself but the, one of the the quickest simplest way would be to click on the overall STL not this one but this STL which is all of these combined and if I come right here to this this is the scale function again other softwares will have this as well and I can dial it up higher higher and let's just kind of check it looks like that's probably a winner but even if you want to have that full support underneath there click it again and that would be more than sufficient uh, but again let's 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 go a really crazy let's go uh, I say really crazy that's not right sounds silly but really overdo it so there's nothing hanging off practically you're good to go there this back here won't be a problem that'll print um, well now you've got all these pieces hanging off what's gonna happen none of that's gonna print and none of these are gonna print you're gonna lose a little print platform right here but you're gonna be able to fit one two three four five six models on this so and realistically if that's how big the model is you're still gonna want some space again you could go in a uh, mesh mixer which I'm gonna show you at the end and uh, modify this bring these bases even closer but I did design them with the intent of having a little bit of an overhang and still having enough separation of the models to keep everything safe so um, or you could individually bring in one base at a time um, which I also have that file uploaded on Thingiverse. You could bring one base at a time, stack each individual one underneath the print plot, uh, underneath the models, and you'd be good to go. I just like this preformed setup because once I get it scaled for one, I can just add them really quickly. But again, if, on the other hand, so if you wanted to go ahead and just delete this, bring in the original, the original single platform click on that click here and now bring it underneath scale it the same amount that we had previously fully supported and if you wanted if you hypothetically we'll, we'll just pretend I'm gonna duplicate the same model we'll, but we'll pretend it was the same or we had multiple steps in here if you needed that size platform I could set all these up how I wanted them to print click on the print platform duplicate duplicate and then just bring them underneath. Simple enough. Again, the the parts off the edge are just gonna uh, are not gonna print there. Not it's not gonna cause a print failure. They just will print. To f they will fail to print in that area alone. No big deal. They're just kind of being. You can imagine them being cropped off essentially. Um, keep in mind. Um, yes, we are wasting some resin that's overhanging off the edges here. Does that matter? Not at all in my mind. Um, it's just, I mean, it's a little, you're going to be wasting an extra um, 30 cents, 40 cents overall and all of that excess resin. Um, if it saves you enough time to be, to keep moving along and not worrying about things, I think it's t totally worth it. So that is um, in, in uh, the last thing. Sorry, I do want to cover. So those are the ways to to use the two different one files I have uploaded. But I also want to show you one more option, and that is how you can go ahead and um, make your own file. Um, how you could open up this case, this file in Mesh Mixer. Now I can just click the Transform, the T button. If you're not familiar, <clears throat> just go to Edit, Transform, T is the shortcut. If you click on Uniform Scaling and click on this box right here, everything will, will scale uniformly. Or actually, sorry, any one of these will scale just that dimension. If you want to type in the numbers you want to do, it'll scale everything uniformly. So anyway, now you can see that you can make it very big, very wide if you needed. Say you were printing night guards and you just needed a small base, you could zip this down really quick. Um, you could make multiple bases if you wanted one for either heel of the, of the models instead of having a continuous strip. Once you have it set once, you can just click, um, come up here to view, objects browser, and then duplicate it. 
and duplicate it and duplicate it and duplicate it. Now we have a bunch. Hit the T for transform button. Accept. And these are right now we have a bunch of them stacked because we just duplicated them one on top of another. Hit the T for transform button. Space them however you want. Doesn't have to be exact measurements like I did. T for transform. And you see we are creating multiple. Once you're done with that, if you decide, you know what, I actually wish, well, I guess there's one more. Let's move this one. Okay. If you get to this point and you say, you know what, honestly, I wish they were wider. I, I skinned up, skinned them up too much. I can click on this, hold the shift button on your mouse. And that selects all of them. And I can click the transform button and widen them. I can expand them. So you can imagine if I had opened up that nine per that nine based profile and brought it in here I can scale it the way, same way I want and you can change the dimensions however you like so anyway this video went a little longer than I, I had planned but I just want to show you that this file although I created it one way does not have to be used the same way for every user you can customize it you can customize it in here by simply scaling it or you could scale it um, bring it in the mesh mixer or another CAD program and modify it quickly um, hopefully in the future we will have the ability to non-uniformly scale right within the software. That will save us uh, some time and make things a little bit easier on us. Uh, hint, hint to all you software developers out there. Okay, so I hope that helps. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Uh, go ahead and you can reach me on my website at baringrutterdds.com um, or you can uh, post in the comments or reach me on Facebook, which is also Baron Grutter DDS. Uh, so, all right, hope this helps some of you. Bye for now.